Okay, very good morning. It is Wednesday the 11th of December. I hope you're doing well. Obviously lots for me to cover on my side this morning, uh, notably the update from the latest YouGov MRP poll which came out last night and has knocked the pound from overnight and is currently trading down to shy of one point in cable. Uh, otherwise, elsewhere, we're going to talk about the ongoing trade war ahead of still the looming threat of renewed tariffs on China by way of the US this Sunday. And then we've got interest rate decisions. Uh, it almost feels like, although we've been so focused on the election here in the UK, there is the ECB um, and the Federal Reserve obviously coming up uh, this week. The Fed in particular will be the focal point for later on this evening. So we'll have a quick look at what to expect from that uh, as well. So first off, let's just have a look at the charts uh, and see what's happening this morning. And uh, I'm not really going to talk too much yet on the pound, but that is probably the most notable uh, chart, let's say, from the morning. You can see quite a gap down given the futures close that we have. Uh, and this was all pricing in that poll that came out last night. Uh, again, we'll go into details shortly. But otherwise, elsewhere, pretty quiet in the US 10-year in gold, both basically flat on the session. Uh, this, of course, coming ahead of that, that US central bank decision. Otherwise, a little bit of movement in the stock futures this morning, uh, seemingly led by a bit of a technical break more than anything fundamental in the DAX. So just before I've switched this live feed on, I was just talking over the mic, uh, where you've had a bit of a break of a technical band of kind of resistance at around this area. And we already had marked up and the market respecting so far some of the previous areas of support and resistance that we've had through the last couple of weeks of trade. And that in itself just restricting some of the price action, but certainly very quick run through 20 points or so when we initially breached the highs that were seen from yesterday afternoon session and some of that range high from the previous day's Asia Pacific session as well, uh, as does the DAX tend to move at around the, the pickup in volume spike at the cash open at 8 a.m. So um, yeah, a little bit more, I'd say, technical on that push rather than anything fundamental going on from a, from a German perspective or overall global macro uh, kind of type of view on the trade side because there's not many in the way of new developments on the trade war either. Uh, WTI crude futures pretty much unchanged. There was, of course, the API crude oil infantries, which came out last night. And if you actually look on the crude chart, you can see we have had a little bit of a downturn uh, as that data did come out. And we've kind of consolidated just below pivot and the $59 handle. So I'll also get you up to speed on what those numbers were as well. So let's jump straight into the news and let's talk about this poll that came out last night. So this is one of the most eagerly anticipated polls because not only is it the one, of course, that predicted the 2017 election correctly using a new methodology otherwise abbreviated to, to MRP, this multi-level regression post-stratification model, uh, which essentially tracks polling data over a period of a week um, from 100,000 panelists across the country and then it extrapolates certain assumptions through different catchments of, of different areas. And this one was, is particularly well followed. It came out initially, the first one, at the end of November. So about two weeks or so ago now. And if you remember, the pound actually gapped up because it showed quite a resounding victory and sizable majority for Boris Johnson's Conservative Party. Now, at the end of November, that reading stood then of a majority for Boris of 68 However, the report that came out last night was the most latest reading. And this one, of course, being quite influential because it's just today is the last day and then the electorate hit the, the polling booths as of tomorrow. So this is about as close as an insight as you're going to get to the, the national sentiment. And as you can see from the headline, the key poll now predicts a majority of 28 so here's a look at those two polls, November 28th to Deck 10th. That's not a poll conducted on that day. That's the release date of that poll. Um, so here you can see the Tory bar has lost about 20 seats. Labour in a net effect has gained that. There's been some slight shifts elsewhere, uh, not a substantial deal uh, to that extent. So. Here you can see the Conservative majority, 68, narrowed to 28. Uh, Lib Dems, very little change. They've had an uptick of two seats. Uh, the SNP 
uh, has seen a slight alteration, but the, the, the shift in balance here is really between uh, Labour and the Conservatives. Uh, so Labour making up a little bit of lost ground that was seen only around two weeks ago. So whether or not the latest um, NHS kind of PR blunder by Boris the other day with that sick child in that Leeds hospital because of the shortage of beds um, or whether or not it's been a degree of complacency in terms of people thinking, well, it's a bit of a shoe in uh, I know talking to Sam, he's of a pretty firm belief that, you know, this is this could well transpire to be a good thing because it will incentivize those conservative voters to really come out in force in order to lock in getting Brexit done, essentially. Uh, it could be one way of looking at it. Um, but the main thing here is having a look then at some other points of interest from this poll because there is a margin of error from the calculation, from the methodology that YouGov um, use in the MRP process. And essentially, that gives a margin of error of 367, which is a, obviously a large majority, even more so than what we had in the first poll back at the end of November, to the low end margin of error of 311, which would be a hung parliament. So captured within this is the, is the definitely a possible case of a hung parliament. Um, YouGov's political research manager said in the report last night that as things currently stand, there are 85 seats with a margin of error of 5% or less. So I guess for me, doing the job that I do, this is a bit of a tantalizing prospect because that means essentially I'm going to have about 85 seats on my hot list that I've got to monitor and track and deliver as quickly as possible to you guys to give you as much advantage as possible to try and get ahead of any subsequent moves that happen in markets. But all of that obviously is conditional on the fact that if we've got to go into uh, a, a kind of more low number of a majority or I guess a minority, if you like, or a low majority for Conservatives or a hung parliament. If that is the case, then obviously it goes really down to the main constituents by constituent as they come out throughout the night. One thing to have a look at, though, there was I know this is slightly blurry, but I did tweet this last night if you wanted to see the graphic in more detail. Uh, but essentially, this was Bloomberg putting out their article ahead of the uh, election tomorrow. And it was talking about the various different scenarios that you could have in the British pound against the dollar. And it was looking at scenario one, two, and three. So to give you a bit of an oversight, scenario one, they were saying that actual relief rally in the pound would be fairly limited given the market's prepositioning that we've seen over the recent few weeks and so on. Uh, that I would agree to some extent, but obviously this latest poll has knocked the, the pound by a good point. So there is now a little bit of renewed upside perhaps to at least reverse course of some of the movement from overnight and potentially if it continues through today. Um, but the point being is that the relief of a Tory majority is going to be far outweighed by the shock of a hung parliament. And so the bigger move here, the bigger risk, and as what we've been discussing in recent briefings about the kind of option activity would suggest that people are taking downside protection because the size of the move to the, to the downside in cable could be fairly severe depending on uh, the outcome. So scenario two, as you can see, Bloomberg here, and they're looking at an average poll of different banks that they have spoken to. They're looking at a range of between 128 to 122. Uh, so this basically is a full reversal in the moving cable of the rally that we had initiated in October when we had the breakthrough on the kind of agreement, at least for the moment, about in framework and principle, the Northern Irish border. Now, scenario three would be down here. This would be if the Tories got less than 300 seats. And at that point, uh, if Labour loses some seats as well, while Labour might be able to form a government with support from other parties, a condition from the coalition would be most likely Corbyn's got to go. Uh, they've already been quite vocal about this, just talking about this as well with some of the guys here in early about if that did uh, transpire and it was a case of the Lib Dems, would they go into pact with the Labour government in order to then you know, form a working government in that scenario? I think that's highly unlikely, even though, yes, you would assume that you know, politicians and Lib Dems would be the same, want a bit of a power grab. 
given the disaster that was the the conservative Lib Dem coalition of 2015 and how badly that is still impacting them from a, a public perception point of view. I think getting into bed with Jeremy Corbyn would be an utter disaster for that party. So I just can't see that happening unless Jeremy goes and the possibility of Jeremy going um, I think is, is a possibility, but he's been such a, you know, he's stuck around through thick and thin. It's going to be a big call for, to see that happen. So all of that being said, then that's got to be a bad case for the pound, at least in the short term. Um, if Corbyn did go and there was a little bit more of a centrist Labour leader in coalition with the Lib Dems, well, then the pound's got to rally under that point, particularly if it's then been smashed down by the initial political uncertainties that may have transpired. So scenario three then would be we get a retest down at that multi-decade low that we briefly flirted with at the beginning of September. If you remember, we had that du double bottom defined at the end of 2016, early 2017, after the initial EU referendum and then the uttering of hard Brexit from Theresa May at the first Tory party conference. That kind of formed that lower bound of 120. We briefly broke there but failed to sustain it um, in around September of this year. But that could well be under threat. And certainly, I mean, we're talking about a 10 point move away from current price. But bearing in mind, this is the lowest case probability. So I would seen that would be a, a big shock if that did happen. Um, but this is the sort of thing we're going to discuss, of course, much more uh, tomorrow. We will be covering this, of course, live. We're going to kick off on this YouTube channel. So do subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll give you a full rundown. The exit poll will hit at 10. There'll be immediate uh, movement on the back of that. And then, as I said, depending on the scenario, um, if it is close, then we go into the real nuts and bolts of the evening. Uh, I'll have a full chronological order of all the key battlegrounds as they come out. I'll be monitoring everything. Uh, and we'll be going through every ebb and flow of moving the pound overnight. All right, moving elsewhere off of the election. Um, this is a graphic uh, that really underpins the price movement in US equities yesterday. Uh, the guys here will remember this quite clearly because they were all trading at the time. You had a big rally because the Wall Street Journal reported China sees US delaying December 15th threat as tariff cuts debated. Market took a good bid off the back of that. And then later on, December 15th, China tariffs depend on how talks go, the whole move reverses. So at the time, I would say, uh, and as I did say, I think it's the least surprising news, that second part coming, because, you know, this is just a gamesmanship, if you like, of um, the fact that there's a negotiation going on, but there's also a financial market that's being traded at this present point in time. So here, I would say just be a little bit careful um, when that initial Wall Street Journal article came out, a couple of the guys managed to capture the move, which was great. But my advice that I was saying to them, having just lived through these kind of news cycles many times before, is that just don't get greedy. Be fairly proactive in management of the trade. Look to at least book the majority of it if you're keeping any on for a further extension of the move. Or if anything, just find that good technical level of relevance, say the previous, the overnight Asia Pacific high, and then just take the trade. Uh, you know, there's no point sitting in it. When you get that kind of momentum ignition, it carries through as that, you know, someone like the Wall Street Journal you saw yesterday, the market didn't move immediately in that kind of algo spike way. There was a little bit of time opportunity to get in because it was from a less followed um, newswire, typically the journal was associated with the Dow Jones Newswire, which not many people have access to. So there was a bit of time, ride the move and then get out of the trade because inevitably this can be the pullback. And from a from a expectation point of view, given those tariffs are still a potential threat on Sunday, I just don't see the point of why Trump would want to agree something so soon. If I was him and I, if I was an advisor to him, I'd want to be keeping the pressure on China all the way up to the last minute to ensure that they really do commit, let's say, on the agricultural purchase side to everything that they're saying. Uh, you know, so I would expect this to be the same. So do be mindful of that more choppy price activity. And I do think there could be late this week a, a potential big shift in the equity space, uh, US led on the back of 
uh, more definitive concrete announcements around yes delay or no and then we go into the weekend and that could cause some end of week selling going into the weekend in particular uh, perhaps people as well closing out some of those long positions that they've had on riding this all-time record high move not wanting to carry any risk into year end a few other things um, I'm not going to speak too much about Christine Lagarde obviously we've got another day to go until we get the ECB meeting but I did think it was quite interesting uh, a lot of the press talking about uh, Lagarde because she's really kept her cards close to her chest since she came in as ECB president five weeks ago quite a few big banks actually talking about the fact that she could um, she could well make an error in regard to an un unintended miscommunication uh, especially when it comes to the Q&A well as much as I agree anytime a new person speaks at one of these top tiered uh, kind of uh, events I do think that is a risk but someone like Christine Lagarde although she was nicknamed Madame Lagaffe when she was the finance minister given that she was quite outspoken at the time that was over 10 years ago when she held that post and she's done a pretty st a stellar job um, ever since when it comes to public announcements so I, I don't share that view that I, I, I assign a very low probability risk that she's going to make a, a communication mishap. Uh, but obviously a lot of people looking at this with great interest. Uh, she does have a job to deliver, of course. A um, couple of big banks like JP Morgan Asset Management uh, going as far as saying this is not an autopilot meeting. And they're saying potentially, you know, could we see a policy move as much as the markets are no, nowhere near pricing that in? Uh, obviously, stranger things have happened. Mario Draghi, you remember when he took over from Jean-Claude Trichet, first thing he did was unwind Trichet's um, policy error of two rate hikes in 2011. He just came in and reversed it, his very first meeting. So, yeah, much to uh, look forward to tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, the Fed is tonight. And again, we're going to cover that live on YouTube this evening so we'll kick that off at 6.30 I'll give you a preview in depth and um, the announcement will come at 7pm London time uh, this a little bit different because Powell obviously is a seasoned veteran now at delivering this and even though this does include the summary of economic projections recent economic data would suggest then that when we look at this which is the federal funds target rate and the rate hike cycle that we had, and then this mid-cycle adjustment, that Powell's been pretty much right. It was a mid-cycle adjustment because it appears to be paying some heed in the economy because as we've seen, GDP forecasting now for Q4 has come back to stabilize around 2%, which has kind of mitigated what had been looking like an extended and protracted downturn and slowdown into Q4. 2% would put us pretty much on stabilized growth for Q2 and Q3 in the US for 2019. So for the moment, and the way that markets are priced, is that this mid-cycle adjustment is done at least for the time being. And so um, the communication, if you like, from the Fed is likely to be one of just sitting on their hands for the time being and largely to be reflected as well in the dot plot changes. We did, of course, as well have payrolls, which helps that narrative. Uh, Non-farm payrolls on Friday came in at 266,000, way above market expectations of 180. Um, it was the largest advance in payroll since January. Uh, notable healthcare gains or jobs in healthcare uh, professionals and technical services. Uh, employment also increased in manufacturing as those GM workers came back from that one-time strike. So. Yeah, it will be one which we'll cover, of course, but I'm not expecting a great deal of fireworks, to be honest, that come later on this evening. Uh, the other thing, we did have the API oil inventories. Uh, as I mentioned, WTI crude has drifted a little lower overnight. Uh, the crude headline was an unexpected build, uh, so a little bit bearish on, on that number. 1.41 million, expectations for a draw of 2.5 million. Cushing, though, was a drawdown of 3.5 million. That is pretty big. Uh, but expectations were for a draw of around two and a half. Gasoline build 4.92 million, more than double consensus. Distillates are build of 3.24. So despite the Cushing number, um, the, the crude and gasoline now weighing and just bumping prices down a, a touch uh, overnight. 
Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, and I'm going to let Sam come on. Um, I understand things have been seeing a little bit of movement as I've been talking, but as I said, a little flurry and a push in the DAX. Again, looks more technical to me. Uh, I can't see any headlines that have really hit the tape, and the fact that the markets have pulled back would kind of solidify that, that way of thinking. Okay, I will see you in the chat room. Thanks very much, guys. Morning. Hope uh, hope we're all doing well. Yeah, Dax was pushing up and, and hitting the R1 there, and uh, I guess it takes us back to where we were on Friday, and almost to the, the top of uh, the well, yeah, just post so 2:45, uh, and uh, yeah, complete reversal uh, of uh, of that move lower that we did have uh, in the early hours of yesterday morning. You can see now that's done and more taking us back to yeah, sorry, Monday. So sort of afternoon high and uh, we've come back a, a bit since then uh, looks like it was almost uh, a central bank meeting the the complete reversal I guess with with this market where you'd be keeping an eye on now is is almost back towards where we, we broke broke out you can see the highs of yesterday it was quite a, a key level resistance for for quite some time before breaking this morning we did actually already snap back to, to test it along with what was the the Asian session higher this morning uh, before that. But keep a, a watch on that. It's going to be key support for this market if we are to continue higher, uh, you would have to say. Also, uh, keep a, an eye on those previous highs. If it was to, to come up, you can uh, almost say there's a bit of a trend line from uh, those highs that we had from uh, late, uh, well, on the 6th uh, as well. Um, so keep a, a watch on that. The next market to, to bring in the pound, of course, gapping lower uh, overnight as was expected. We did come down, of course, at uh, uh, we can see here 9:30 to 10 o'clock, and uh, keep a, a watch if we are to push higher on any potential gap fill. You would expect that to be some sort of resistance uh, if that was to happen. 30, uh, 131 to the downside, obviously keep a, a watch on that, but more so I would just say just a tiny bit above that. You got the low that we had back on uh, the 6th and that round number and some support that we had on the 4th. So quite a key level there uh, I would have marked up. And then if that goes, be looking at the high that we had from the morning of the 4th as well, which give or take is about 30 ticks below there. Looking a bit longer term because of course, you know, the um, the move uh, that we had to the upside was on the premise that, you know, there's going to be a decent majority. That's perhaps not looking as likely now. Uh, so if those levels are to go, well, you could always be looking at uh, us getting before uh, the election result down to 130.17. I think that would be a, a big move to happen. I don't necessarily think that's completely out of the question. So those would be the main levels I'd be looking at, 131, 130.69 and 30.17 uh, to the downside. Uh, and of course, if we do get some uh, uh, positive spin on this uh, double bottom and then up towards that uh, that gap, keep a, a watch on that. Before that, though, 131, 33 would be a level to focus on. Some nice support in the Asian session before we did break down when volume just starts to pick up post uh, 6.30 into 7 o'clock. So some key levels there to, to keep a, an eye on. Obviously, Euro Pound as well uh, would have gapped to the upside. You can see there, obviously, the liquidity in the future is not uh, great for this market. But, uh, yeah, one to, to have marked up. Moving over to the Euro Dollar, you can see it's coming under a bit of pressure uh, this morning. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be completely dragged around by the pound, but you'd expect if the pound was to break that low, the euro should do so as well and and worth as well with the the uh the euro here getting on this trend line or potential trend line should we say because you've got the low that we had back on non-farm payrolls on that sixth and then monday uh, and it does look like if we were to come back down to to test this trend line you can have a an area of support which was of course resistance back on the ninth so keep a watch on that if that was to come in now that would be around 110.80 uh, on the future. Some key support levels below that though, most notably from yesterday uh, around midday into the afternoon at 110.77 uh, and then the, all those lows really from uh, those previous days. To the upside if uh, the euro was to, to have a, a strong uh, you know, back end of the, the morning into the afternoon, it's got to get above its previous low. Similar time that the, the pound broke down, so 110.91 would be an area to focus on. 
and you're probably as well worth getting on a couple of these trend lines which you can see were well respected yesterday and then into this morning so that third test could come in around one of those previous highs uh, as well so euro range is relatively small it seems as if it's just getting squeezed both ways no harm in perhaps waiting for the break of either of those having a, a look over at gold this morning just as equities were pushing up we saw gold just on the five minute come down to test that low of the day it's it's uh, all that is though just a little test not much going on there but it is quite a key level uh, on that low around 14.66.8 uh, you've got the low from yesterday afternoon so let's just call that a bit of a double bottom now and it was the highs from monday evening and then tuesday early hours so key level to to have marked up if we were to to fall through that then you've got all of these uh bottoms to keep an eye on around 14.64 from yesterday's low to monday's low and then if that if we start coming into that territory, then you're getting the, the trend line from the low that we had back in November, uh, and that all comes into play for, for gold. So that could be you know, an opportunity if that is to go uh, as well. So definitely would be marking that up. You can see here, starting on the 26th, going into uh, the lows that we had on the 29th, and then all of Monday, uh, and then yesterday as well, that trend line. To the upside, because of course it's not guaranteed that we do get a test of all that level you can see the high of the day where you would just want to move that horizontal line just a bit up because it's taking uh, the the interest here of those highs that we had back from around 3.50, 4 o'clock yesterday to so keep a, a marked zone on that with yet today's high uh, as well break above that and I don't see much stopping it really until you get towards sort of 14.73 uh, as well I favour the move to the downside here but any push higher uh, you've got to be aware of uh, 14.76.9, the nice double bottom there that we broke on non-farm payrolls. Didn't really get a retest of that. So if that was to happen, you could expect some decent uh, resistance there. But nicely set up, has to be said. Having a, a quick look over at uh, the S&P, you can see to the tick hitting, uh, well, pretty much the tick hitting yesterday's high uh, and then coming back down, testing what was the... Uh, previous high of the day as well so in between that range call it a new zone between 30 uh, 31 43 and 31 36 keep a, a watch on that r1 and the high that we had from monday as well a key one to to focus on uh, just having this trend line on from the the sixth let's see if that's come in so that's probably worth having uh, a look at that as well and then of course the trend line that we had from the all-time high uh, marks up similar kind of price so using the high from the second the sixth uh, and the ninth uh, a break above that then we could get a, a further push to the upside but it has to be said the S&P is a tricky one to trade at the moment I don't you know we're getting so many conflicting trade comments that are coming out it's uh, it's a tricky one to, to trade and I don't know whether you'd want to get too heavily involved in this market uh, or not at the moment but certainly to the downside you can see a well-respected uh, sort of area uh, where we're getting squeezed in from from both directions so I would have this on as well you can see let me just modify that sorry starting from uh, yesterday uh, around one o'clock to this morning and then again just on the eight o'clock so yes there's opportunities if those are to go but I would be looking to take profit a bit earlier than normal especially in the afternoon once Trump starts tweeting and these comments start coming through uh, as well Having a final look over oil, you can see not much really going on here. If you're looking on the 60 minute, it's getting squeezed from both directions. Uh, we had this trend line on from those lows yesterday. That's kind of, well, it didn't really uh, get tested after hitting the at one o'clock. Uh, but we did come down literally, well, 15 minutes or so ago to, to have tested that. So there you've got the third test of that. Uh, so definitely have that marked up here on the 60 minute from the low of the sixth to the low of the temp and then at the moment the low of the day a break of that then you'll be looking down towards s1 where you'd expect some support and then really any of those lows that make up that trend line uh, as well pivot to the upside worth keeping uh, an eye on just because it was some nice support uh, late last night uh, we retested it pretty well in the early session so around there 59 dollars pivot and a, a decent uh, point of support turn resistance above that you'll be looking at any of these uh, points where uh, price reacted quite well uh, following the uh, the API 
last night. So, of course, keeping a, a watch on the DOE later uh, as well. Quick look over the, the bigger picture. What's the DAX doing? Still holding above its, its Asian session high. So as long as that happens, you could imagine maybe the S&P is going to do the same and get another test of yesterday's high and then keep an eye on those trend lines uh, as well. The pound's going to be interesting because you've got see some really key levels of support below, uh, but you've just had a double bottom there. So can we come back now to test 131.33? And if that goes, then suddenly you're looking at the gap getting filled. Gold has got some really interesting levels of support just below. Uh, if that is to break, I think there could be a decent sized move uh, as well. Euro, keep an eye on that trend line. But other than that, I hope you all have uh, a good trading day. And any questions, please do let us know.